Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, I said it, I did. Merry Christmas, and you know what, I mean it. Merry Christmas. I want you to have a very Merry Christmas. Now, I know that there is some pushback on this already. Like, like some of you are like, what? What? Merry Christmas? I mean, Thanksgiving dinner is barely cold. How could you possibly be bringing out the Merry Christmas already? It's time, it, it's time, we're moving on. We're, we're stepping into Christmas. Uh, some of you may be going, oh, Christmas, here we go. All this again, you know what? You just kind of get fed up and tired of Christmas and you say, you know, the over-commercialization of Christmas, it's just, it's just too much. It's, it's everywhere, it's in the stores and everywhere you go, yes, I know. What a wonderful opportunity for us to, to dig in and, and embrace something that our, our world really needs. And some of you may be going, but hey, you know, and all that over-commercialization of Christmas and it coming so fast, nobody really understands what Christmas is really all about. Exactly. This is our opportunity as a part of the family of God, his church, to, to extend a, a very Merry Christmas, the, the merriest of Christmases to everyone, because we know the hope of Christmas that there is a Messiah who has come, that God so loved the world that he would send his one and only son, Jesus, to come and, and die for us. And yes, Christmas is about so much more than just a baby born and laid in a manger. But from those humble beginnings, the life of Jesus began. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. And that baby would grow up and die on a cross and take my sin and your sin and, and the sin of all humanity inside of him and pay the penalty, the consequences of sin and lay down his life and he would be risen again. And so the hope of Christmas is that Christ has come and we celebrate Christmas and we want everyone to have a Merry Christmas. And so we begin a, a brand new message series today called Who Needs Christmas? Who Needs Christmas? I, I think it's fantastic that in 2019, late November, we planned a message series for 2020, for December of 2020, called Who Needs Christmas? I, I just, I see God's providence in this. I see his hand in this because let me tell you, first and foremost, who needs Christmas? Everyone, everyone. And if there was ever a year that would help us to realize that everyone needs Christmas. It's been this one. So while I know you may be on a rush to just blow through December, cause you're like, whoa, this Christmas is gonna be different. It's not gonna be like Christmases before and it's not gonna be the same. That's true. It may not be the Christmas you planned for, or the Christmas you would have drawn up, but it's the Christmas you've got. So have a Merry Christmas. You see, different is different. It doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means different. And God is doing some wonderful things this Christmas. And so let's not just rush through thinking that somehow flipping the page on 2020 into 2021 is going to magically make everything change. That's silly. It doesn't. But I know a savior. I know a God. I know a redeemer. I know one who can bring massive eternity, eternity shaping changes and every heart. So who needs Christmas? Everyone. Our memory verse for this series is Luke 2, verse 10. It says, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Let's read that again together. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people, for everyone. Christmas is for everyone. So let's kick off this Christmas season with something really important. Merry Christmas. Now, I, I know I already said it, but let's practice this together. Let's go ahead. Merry Christmas. Now you say it back. Let's try again. Merry Christmas. Say it back. If you happen to be with anybody, look at somebody else and just say Merry Christmas. Well, let's get in the habit of doing this. Uh, maybe even right now, take out your phone and send a text to the first person you thought of. Merry Christmas. Uh, let's, let's begin to wish people a Merry Christmas. Now, I understand that not everybody's really ready to receive a Merry Christmas. We're all coming from different places and different experiences. But to extend that, to offer it to someone, I, 
I really believe that's what the Lord intends. So let's jump in to Luke chapter two. Uh, let's see kind of how God announced the arrival of his son uh, through the angel to the shepherds out in the fields. Verse eight, it says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest. And on our earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. All right, so Christ Jesus is born. Now, if you dig into Luke a, a little bit before this, uh, you, you see that, that an angel appears to Mary and lets her know what's gonna go down. Now, she's got some questions about that. Like, whoa, hey, I'm a, I'm a virgin. How can this be? And, and her response though, to the message of the Lord is, may it be as you have said. And then also, as you, as you look in like Matthew, uh, the angel appears to, to Joseph and says, Joseph, this is how this is gonna go down. And Joseph has some questions, but he says, yes. And he engages in God's plan. And Jesus was born to Mary as they were in Bethlehem and he was placed in a manger. But the very next thing that happens is God brings some shepherds into the story. Now, why shepherds? Oh my, I mean, there's been all kinds of thoughts about that. Why the shepherds? Why shepherds? You know, I think God's got a soft spot in his, soft spot in his heart for shepherds, for sure. He's, he's a shepherd. I mean, Jesus himself is referred to as the good shepherd. I think that's, that's definitely true. But I mean, even just strategically thinking, maybe uh, you have these shepherds who are nomadic in nature, who were available, who then went and explored and saw what, what they had been told. And then they went and shared that with everyone everywhere they went. That's a pretty good communication strategy. Communicate to uh, some people who will go and see and, and then will tell. I, I want you to understand that's still God's communication strategy today is to share with some people who will then explore and see for themselves and then will go and tell everyone they talk to what they've experienced and seen. That's his church. That's you and me. That's, that's us as we are praying for one. God, please give me one person to share your love with. In fact, let's do it right now. Let's pray that out loud together. You ready? God, please give me one person to share your love with. Well, one way of doing that is by saying Merry Christmas and, and to extend that to people, knowing what a Merry Christmas really looks like, that we have uh, the hope of God, that there is the hope of a relationship with our creator, that a savior has come and that Christmas is indeed for everyone, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, Christmas is for you. So Merry Christmas. And so as we pray for one, maybe we can also ask God, God, give me one person to share a Merry Christmas with, to actually say these words. Now, I do think these words are important, Merry Christmas, and I'm gonna give you three keys to a successful Merry Christmas, okay? We are just like the shepherds at this point. God is revealing himself to us. We're exploring that. And now we have the opportunity to go and share everything that we have seen and heard, Merry Christmas. All right, so if we're going to extend a Merry Christmas, key number one, make sure that you are having a Merry Christmas. All right, this is really important. You can't share what you don't have. Now, your Merry Christmas this year will probably look different than it ever has before. Fine, as I said before, different doesn't mean bad. Different just means different. And so engage with God. Instead of making up your mind already before we've barely even entered into the Christmas season that this Christmas is gonna be no good, what if you engaged with God and said, what are you up to this Christmas, God? How are you gonna use it for a good? What opportunities will there be 
Instead of looking around and saying, well, we'll just skip it this year. How about we engage even more? I can tell you that's, that's what the staff and the elders and the leaders of MCC, that's what we're doing. We're saying, you know what? Let's engage even more. Let's press into this and, and let's offer the merriest Christmas we possibly can. But let's make sure we're having a merry Christmas. Meet with God every day. Make spending time with him and praying and seeking him and encountering him in the scriptures and, and sharing what you're experiencing with him an integral part of every single day. So step one, make sure you're having a Merry Christmas. Number two, and say it like you mean it. I'm, I really mean this one. I, there's, uh, there's this weird thing that's happened like within Christianity as culture has shifted and, and maybe it's become uh, like a, I don't know, culturally insensitive or something to say Merry Christmas. And so there's been like a, a rebellion against that in some, who when somebody says, happy holidays, they respond with Merry Christmas. <laughs> could, you, could you please keep your mean-spirited Merry Christmas to yourself? It doesn't help. It's, it's no good. If you want to say Merry Christmas, and I think it's a great thing to say, then put a smile on your face. Start there. If you can't say it with a smile on your face, maybe skip it. Merry Christmas. And to say it genuinely, like you really mean it, like I, I, want, I want you to have this. And as you say it like you mean it, that love will move through you. It doesn't mean everyone's going to respond the way you want them to. But if it's genuine, if it's heartfelt, if it's from God and his full of love and moving through you, God will use it to work on hearts. And so have a Merry Christmas. Say it like you mean it. And number three, pray for the people you said it to. Maybe as you continue walking on, maybe you know that person, maybe you don't, to just lift them up and say, God, please help them to have a Merry Christmas. Help them to encounter you. As you maybe say this to your neighbors or coworkers or classmates, to, to then pray for them by name and, and say, God, please let them have a Merry Christmas. I wanna encourage you, be praying for your, your neighbors every single day by name, that they would have a Merry Christmas. Pray for the people you work with by name every day that they would have a Merry Christmas. Pray for your family. If you're lucky to, to live with, with family members or others, pray for them by name every day that they would have a Merry Christmas and then extended family as well. And watch what God does as he gives you a very Merry Christmas because you have a Christmas on point. You're in on what God is doing. You're like those shepherds who God made his announcement to, who are checking it out, experiencing it for yourselves. And then you're going and you're sharing it with others. So Merry Christmas. All right, next thing that I wanna share with you is this. Tis the season. Oh yeah, tis the season. Tis the season for the Merry Christmases. But look, it's time. I mean, we're in it. it it's Advent time. We're, we're stepping into December in this Christmas season, whether you like it or not. I mean, we're in it. So let's make the most of it. Let's not blow it off. Let's not ignore it, but rather let's engage and make the most because it is the season. A passage I, I really never preach from at Christmas time is found in Ecclesiastes chapter three in the Old Testament. And it may sound a little familiar to it. There's a, a song, like an old folk song uh, that, that may ring true with you and you may remember this, but well, let's read this. It says in Ecclesiastes three, verse one, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to, to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time of peace. What can workers gain from their toil? I've, I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there's nothing better for people than to, uh, to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing 
can be taken from it. Tis the season. This, tis the season for a Merry Christmas. Tis the season for the work of our God. Tis the season for people to meet Jesus and to step into his kingdom for all of eternity. This is the season. And so as we consider what, what God is doing, we can look around and say, you know what? We just want to get over this. We want to be done with it. But no, we are in this season. And it's not a mistake. It's not an accident. God knows what he's doing. And we are in this season. And I'm, I'm so glad that the church, the family of God, the body of Christ is in this season, these, these turbulent times where people have really hard, challenging questions they're asking and they may be disillusioned or are lost and without hope and it's becoming more and more relevant and they're getting more and more aware of it every day that the church, God's kids, his family is here to carry out his work, to share this unbelievable hope that we have and everyone needs Christmas, especially this year. So it tis the season. All right. Now, what does that mean? Well, when I thought of tis the season, I thought of the song. Tis the season to be jolly. Go ahead. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Now, maybe you're going, uh, I don't know there, buckaroo. Not feeling too, too jolly. I don't know. I, I was thinking about that. Like, what does it mean to to be jolly. I think there's a, a lightheartedness in that. And, and I understand that, that maybe these feel like really heavy times, that it feels like a, a super heavy season. But what if we really did, as, as we're told to do in the New Testament, we, we cast our burdens onto Jesus. We took our anxieties, very real anxieties. I'm, I'm not diminishing them or saying they're not real, but we took them, these, these financial concerns these relational concerns, these health concerns, these world concerns. And we just said, oh, yeah, these are too heavy for me. And we cast them onto Jesus. We, we trust him with them as he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, all you who are heavy hearted, come to me. And Jesus says, I will give you rest. He tells us to take his yoke upon us for his yoke is easy and his burden is light, that there can be a lightheartedness in this life that, that doesn't take away from the gravity of the opportunities we have, but there is a hope and a trust that says, yes, not only do I believe Emmanuel, God is with us, that Christ Jesus has come and a savior has been born, but I believe that he took sin inside of him and he put it to death on the cross and it was buried with him. And on the third day he rose again and as he is risen, so my heart rises within me. Yes, tis the season to be jolly, lighthearted, because we share in his resurrection power. He has taken what was, what was broken and what was dead, and he has breathed new life into me and to you and to his church. And we have a hope to share. And let's do it with a, a jolliness. All right. So how does that look like? Uh, to be jolly. All right. Well, let's go to the, the song. Let's decorate. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. I know maybe this year you're like, well, nobody's coming to the house. Or we're not going to get to have the party. Or we're not going to get those decorations out. Let's do it. Do it up. Let, let's, let's go ahead. Put the lights up. Put the decorations up. Put the signs out. Put the, 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 the nativity set out. I, I do encourage you, you know, put the wise men off to the east. They're, they're on a journey. They're not there yet. Put them in another room. They're, they're on their way. You know, let it be a biblically correct nativity, but go ahead and put it out. And remember and talk about what these decorations mean and why they're there. Get a tree. Put the tree up. Decorate the tree if you can. Let's not skip these things, but let's go ahead and engage and let's be jolly. And there's all kinds of things that maybe we can't do this year, but the things we can, let's do them. And let's do them in a very jolly way. Next, dress up. Let's go. 
You know this is my favorite time of the year. That's the only time of the year I get to wear my reindeer coat. I got my Christmas duds. They are ready to roll. I'm excited about this. And so, uh, as the song says, don we now our, our gay apparel, our, our happy clothes. I, an ugly Christmas sweater, if that's what does it for you, then let's go. <laughs> Dig into it. But let's, let's go ahead and, and say, yeah, I, I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and put on what's happening inside of me to let it be seen. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I do encourage the smile. You know, if if you're happy and you know it, let your face show it. You know, if God has has brought you a happiness and a jolliness and a peace and a lightheartedness, then let that show in your countenance and how you live. And then sing, sing, troll the ancient Yuletide carol. The songs of Christmas. Yes, yes, and yes. Thank you, God, for these songs of Christmas. There's something amazing about being in a store or a coffee shop or just out and about in the community and to hear songs about Jesus. It's the only time of year I know that this happens. What an opportunity. And so while some, like, I get it, you know, over-commercialization of Christmas, I'm like, bring it on. Let's get it infused into everywhere so that we have opportunity to sing and make music in our hearts, giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we, as we sing, this is the season to be jolly. And as we exalt God and lift him up and, and worship him, this is the season and it's time. And our, our world needs to, to see the, the hope of God within his church rise up and be expressed. If your family members and, and friends and neighbors and coworkers are, are watching you, a, a follower of Jesus, to see what you'll do this Christmas season, what will they see? Will they see the hope of a resurrected Savior and the hope of eternal life that isn't a far away distant hope, but a very present and real hope being expressed through the way you live. This is the opportunity that we have and our world needs Christmas. And so our world needs you to celebrate this Christmas, tis the season. So I'll give you one more thought on this one. This is, this is a message for all people. So joy to the world. This is really what we have the opportunity to extend joy to the world. It's kind of amazing, you know, if you look at social media and you realize that social media is in some ways maybe like a slice of life or uh, it gives us a picture of what's going on in the hearts of people. There's not a whole lot of joy out there being shared. A lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of, I'm going to prove a point, a lot of division, not a lot of joy. What if that changed? Why not? If we really have the joy of the Lord in us, then we have the opportunity and I believe the responsibility to share that joy in a very powerful way. And so I was struck by Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 13. It gives some very practical ways to to share joy, like genuine joy uh, to everyone. And so we'll pick it up in verse 9. It says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Just in those few verses, four verses, there's there's like 12 ways to, to share joy in a very sincere way with our world. Uh, First of all, love must be sincere. Uh, So love your neighbor. Love your family. Love the the people who, who make up and comprise your world. God has you strategically placed where he has you to share his love. And so we can sit there and go, well, I can't do it this way and I can't do it that way and I can't do it like I used to. Okay, what what is God doing right now? How can you, because love doesn't give up. 
Love doesn't look at it and go, well, it's not, it's not what I expected. It's not how I would have done it. So never mind. Love says, okay, where can I get to work? Where, how, how can this love be expressed in maybe a, a new way, in a fresh way? Because here's the thing, as it's expressed in new and fresh ways, people who have grown cold to it, who have tuned it out, they may listen and receive for the first time ever. Let's go, church. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Uh, those, those things that draw us away from God, we can relinquish them and let them go and, and cling to what is good and what he's up to. Be devoted to one another in love. Re-engage with people. Uh, look around you and, and pay close attention to those who are lonely. Reach out to them. And if you yourself are lonely and you're aware of that, then, then ask God, God, uh, help me to eradicate loneliness in others. And what will be amazing is, is some of that loneliness that you're experiencing will be eradicated in you. And be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. Kind of one of the neat things about gift giving and, and some of the traditions around that is, is to, to offer a gift to someone, to honor them. I was thinking about you. And I, I wanted to give you something. Never be lacking in zeal. Tis the season, right? Tis, tis the season. Joy to the world. Don't be lacking in zeal, but let's step into this. Keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Let's not grow cold. Let's, let's not die off. Let's allow this, this fire, this spark that God has not only ignited in our souls, but let's seek, let's pray, let's act, let's refine, and let's kindle the fire that God has started in us. And as we engage relationally with God, as we're consumed by him, then we'll keep our spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We're not going to grow weary or lose heart or fall away, but rather we'll engage ever more. Be joyful in hope. Our hope is real. Patient in affliction. Yeah, the affliction is real, but we are waiting on the Lord, waiting for what he will do. Faithful in prayer. Don't stop praying. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Be generous. Look for every way you can to be generous and say yes. Uh, make sure you have a, a plan for generosity and that you are, are seeking God in that and saying yes to him. So you have a great confidence in, in who he is and what he's doing and how he's moving through you. And practice hospitality. Be a, a hospitable person and uh, while that may look a little bit different in regards to like hospitality with our homes and, and, and how our homes are being utilized and open to, to have people come in, um, you can open up your heart. Have a hospitable heart. Uh, you can help open up the, the kingdom of heaven to others. You, we are his ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us to have hospitable hearts that, that are saying, yes, God, let your, let your kingdom come and your will be done. And help show the way and invite others into his glorious kingdom. Be hospitable. I know sometimes it, it's kind of crazy how this gets in there, but like a, a subtle mentality that says, well, yeah, I want, I want people to be in the kingdom of heaven, but I mean, not those people or no, not, not those people. They're not going to be. There. Yeah. And we walk away almost with a, an attitude that just says, you know, I, I kind of hope heaven is like, like really small. I can tell you that's not the heartbeat of God. Christmas is for everyone. This is a message for all people. So Merry Christmas. Tis the season. Let's go. Joy to the world. Yes. Are you ready? Because God is moving and working and he's calling you. So right now, will you pray and just say, God, help me to have a Merry Christmas. Let's ask him right now. God, help me to have a Merry Christmas. And now let's ask him, God, help me to give a Merry Christmas. God, help me give a Merry Christmas. 
Tis the season. Joy to your world. Amen.